Yo. October 26th, 2021. Habcast 170, episode 170. Let's go. Happy Tuesday, you guys. Hope everyone's day went well. Of course, I have a few things to share with you. An evening of reflection. How did no one see kids left alone with brother skeleton in Houston House of Horrors next to other people? How did no one how did no one see kids left alone with brother skeleton in the uh, Houston house as Houston police investigate the House of Horrors where three children and a skeleton of a fourth were abandoned in deplorable conditions? One thing is becoming clear, warning signs were missed. Oh, I bet. <laughs> The siblings uh, who range in age from 7 to 15 had not been enrolled in school, which would uh, which would send somebody around to figure out what's going on. As per the uh, the article I read, last, the article I pulled last night, where uh, just for parents having their kids, uh, a couple having their kids unvaccinated and not uh, having them go to school, got child protection called on them. So this should have been... Uh, in the same category along those lines, like why the kids aren't in school, uh, had not been enrolled in school since May 2020. A neighbor found an older boy sleeping in a playground. Another neighbor complained about the persistent foul odor coming from the apartment. So there was obvious signs. There had to be obvious signs. In the end, it was the teen who had been caring for the three younger kids in the uh, absent of any adults who summoned, who summoned police to the home over the, over the weekend. Uh, years, uh, the remains of a nine-year-old who had died as long as a year ago were inside the apartment with his three surviving brothers, uh, two of whom were uh, deemed malnourished. Um, police located the boy's mother and her boyfriend and questioned the pair, but then released them. How is this? This is what's bugging me here. Is how are they not up for any type of neglect if they are uh, uh, the if they have custody, if the mom has custody of the kids, how are who had custody of these children that they slipped through the cracks this bad? Uh, authorities have not explained why the kids were alone, how they survived on their own, how one of them died, or how one noticed what was happening. This is still like, yeah. Beyond the kids vanishing from the school system during the pandemic, there were other red flags. The woman who lived next door to the children's unit uh, told ABC 13 that the smell coming uh, from the apartment was so vile she could not turn on her air conditioning and she complained to the manage office, the management office more than once. Now, management should have been knocking on those people's door. They actually have, uh, they can enter your apartment or something like that. Yeah. So, yeah. So if at the very least, management should have found a, a corpse in the, uh, in, the, in the room, they did. Yeah, they should have inspected the house. Uh, another local, yeah, management should be, have their heads on the chopping block for this one. Another local resident, uh, Eric Chapman, told KHOU that she spoke to the oldest child after seeing him asleep on a playground slide. I asked him if he was hungry. He said, yeah, and I bought him out some food and some drinks. Uh, he wouldn't talk about his parents, Chapman said, adding that she did not pressure him because I did not want him to come to me for food if you're that hungry i want him to come to me because i at least knew he was eating well uh chapman said she was disgusted by what she later learned if i knew something was wrong with any of those kids i would have took all of them well you had a year ma'am i'm sorry <laughs> i'm sorry and for uh caring and for what you did the part that you did is uh uh thankful yeah it it helped it helped bring this, uh, yeah, it helped bring this to the light. But you had a whole year, though, to figure out that something was very wrong. Local Child Protective Services official, uh, officials took custody 
of the three remaining siblings, but has not explained how it did not know they were endangered for so long. Yeah, this is a case of where the uh, it takes a village and the village failed these kids and the parents failed the kids. Uh, we still the jury is still out on what the hell happened to the uh, to the parents, whoever had custody of the kids and uh, the system. Yeah, the system failed the kids. Wow. Next up. Hiker missing for 24 hours ignored rescuers' calls because they didn't recognize the number. <laughs> what? So this is what I get. A hiker in Colorado who was lost for 24 hours ignored rescuers' phone calls because they didn't recognize the number authorities uh, said last week. And uh, this is what I get from this is that, uh, you know, the saying that you throw your blue life, you throw your blue when you're when you're drowning, you, uh, you throw the red lifesaver away because you want the uh, you want the purple one or whatever. Yeah. Hiker was reported overdue at about 8 p.m. on October 18th. According to a statement from Lake County Search and Rescue, the person who called said the hiker started a, started at Mount Elbert from the South Trailhead at 9 a.m. and had not returned. Lake County search and rescue search multiple areas for the hitchhiker, but couldn't find a person. Multiple attempts to contact the subject via their cell phone were unsuccessful. And okay, okay, in this uh, in this hiker's defense, how many times would you be expecting to uh, get a call from a uh, from a rescuer, but your battery's dead, <laughs> and you get a call about your warranty about your car? <laughs> yeah, hey. Fun fact, get yourself a Nokia 3390, which you can has the green screen. You can play Snake for like four hours and it still has a full battery. The hiker returned home on October 19th, more than 20 hours after beginning their hike. The person was not uh, identified. The subject stated they lost the trail around nightfall and spent the night searching for the trail. And once on the trail, bounced around onto different trails, trying to locate the proper trailhead finally reaching their car uh the next morning this is an experienced hiker yeah obviously this is an experienced hiker because uh they knew exactly what to do if they lost their bearings uh they had no idea that sar was looking out for him one notable takeaway is that the subject ignored repeated phone calls from us because they didn't recognize the number the statement continued if you're overdue according to your itinerary and you start getting repeated calls from an unknown number, please answer the phone. <laughs> it may be an SAR team trying to confirm you're safe. But um, yeah, be it that this this uh this hiker, uh, she knew how to uh try the different trails, she knew how to uh get get uh or he uh the hiker knew how to get their bearings. So uh they're experienced enough to know that they probably weren't in any real danger. Uh, the statement on Facebook garnered more than 100 comments, many critical of the hiker, uh, but Lake County Search and Rescue came to the hiker's defense. Please remember that what seems like common sense in hindsight is not obvious to a subject in the moment when they are lost and panicking. It really, from here, it doesn't sound like she was really panicking, it said, it said in a comment. I mean, like, uh, you get, you get, it's panic, it's cause for concern, and then there's panic. Like, there's a level to it. There's levels to it, and uh, yeah, there's a heightened sense of, and then there's there's a, a cause for concern, and then there's uh, then there's panic, and yeah, and I don't think she, hit, I don't think that hiker hit the panic point. It does, it doesn't sound like it. In Colorado, most folks who spend time outdoors have a good understanding of the SAR infrastructure that is there to help them, but this is not the case nationwide. Please keep your if you like the show, subscribe. That's all I ask for. Not like the uh the the person who spammed me on Instagram and said the uh, uh give me your cash app and I'll give you five thousand dollars. No, I don't need that. I mean, <laughs> all you need to do is subscribe. <laughs> That's all. Five thousand. Yeah. The uh the the message said I'm giving uh twenty people five thousand dollars. Just drop your cash app. Stop it. Come on, what are you like? Like, what do I? Who do I look like? Joe Neckbone, trusted one of my New York. That you know what that means. Uh, yeah, that and what else was the other one? 
it was uh people on Facebook and Instagram had the message. Uh, they all had the same exact message. I got ten thousand four hundred and eighty one dollars and ninety five cents from Bitcoin. <laughs> it was the same. It wasn't ten thousand four hundred and eighty, not ten thousand four hundred and eighty uh two and ninety three cents it was just all the same message nobody even changed like come on can you be more obvious like is, am i that easy a target is that what you new tenant killed by landlord for complaining about heating i guess we uh we know what happened to the old tenant then right <laughs> cops say a landlord in kansas city missouri has been accused of stabbing a tenant more than 30 times after he was alerted to heat problems by a couple who I asked if they could use a space heater to warm their chilly new rental. Jesus. Gordon May 44 entered a not guilty plea. And he still said I had a right to, I'm not guilty. I had a right to stab him. Gordon Macbeth 44 entered a not guilty plea on Monday after Clay County prosecutors charged him with second degree murder and armed criminal action and the death of 28 year old Daryl Gillen on Friday afternoon. It's cold in here, man. Like, I mean, like even during this time, even if you're, uh, you're complex, cause some complexes are, uh, the heating is controlled from, uh, from the office. Okay. So at least like at X, uh, X time in the morning, I don't know, like five, six in the morning, you know, people are getting up. Now, nah, man, you run the heat for a little bit, knock the chill off. Then, uh, later on in the day, you don't run it. And then at nighttime, you run it for a little bit. You don't just freeze somebody out like and have people waking up sick. And yeah, uh, according to the, the court documents obtained by the Kansas City Star, Macbeth allegedly stabbed Gillen more than 30 times on Friday after Gillen's girlfriend messaged the landlord at least alerting him that the heat wasn't working and it turned this shit on. <laughs> they like, oh, they ain't even been here a whole weekend. They already talk about heat. Oh no, we gotta uh <laughs> they aim it too high. Samantha Pullman said that she and Gillen, her boyfriend of five years, had only moved into the home a week. But why is it always a week, a week gestation period? At first, the guy was perfectly nice about it. Yeah, no problem, no problem. Yeah. Uh, he, she told KCTB, he is like, Yeah, I'll come over. Yeah, and we'll do that. Yeah, I'll come over and we'll uh <laughs> he's he picking out he's, he's at the knife rack right there on the phone, like, yeah. I'll, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and just then out of nowhere, he completely flipped and act like we were asking too much and being a complete burden. According to court documents, Coleman told detectives that Macbeth pulled a long knife from a sheath on his belt and began stabbing her boyfriend for no apparent reason. Wow. The guy said, if that's not good enough, I will kill you. And then he pulled, damn, did you even change the heat before they had a chance to complain a second time? <laughs> you ain't even, <laughs> you ain't even changed the heat first. Like, maybe they would have left you alone if you just would have changed the heat the first time. And uh, and then he pulled out a knife and started stabbing him. Uh, Pullman told Fox 4, adding that her boyfriend died in her arms. I pet his head and I told him it was going to be okay. No, it's not. We're some, this is supposed to be the start of our life together. And the ambulance was coming and that I loved him. This is fucked up. She said her and Gillen met online and he was a sweet, nervous gentleman from the beginning. And uh, according to the court documents, detectives said that video surveillance footage from a house in the neighborhood appeared to show Macbeth arriving at the residence at around 3.30 p.m. And that a knife was also later recovered at the scene. Damn. Wife accused of dismembering husband's body, claiming his benefits for four years because, God damn it, even if you got to, even if I got to kill you, you're going to bring something to the table in this relationship. <laughs> 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 go be no, you just uh, home uh, uh, resting and sleeping. Yeah, my check is coming in. My check is coming in the mail and I'm still working 40, 50 plus hours a week. And you just think that, oh, no, 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 no. That is not enough, sweetheart. A woman dismembered her, her dead body, her dead husband's body, threw his remains in the trash, and continued to collect his benefits for years, according to a federal criminal complaint. Yeah, this is how, <laughs> when girls say, I'm trying to manifest the sugar daddy, and I'm not trying to give up no sugar, this is the only way you're going to get it, ladies. So pay attention. <laughs> Nancy K. Shedleski, 69, of Las Vegas, 
is facing a charge of theft of government money, according to the complaint obtained by Newsweek. According to the complaint, Shedleski never reported her husband's death in 2015. Uh, the Social Security Administration continued to deposit his retirement benefits into the couple's account until about December 2019. The, uh, the total amount of payments between August 2015 until about December 2019 was estimated about 121,040 bucks. Whoa, the SSA received an anonymous, yo, when you're not work, that might not seem like much over a course of four years, but mind you, this is money that you're really not doing any heavy lifting for. So yeah, <laughs> the SSA received an anonymous allegation in June, 2019, that Shedleski's husband had disappeared in 2015, disappeared, and that she was the one receiving his benefits. Well, what did he, why didn't they look into, like, well, where did he go? Like, did he just, no, he just, he went out for cigarettes, said he was going out for cigarettes. He never came, but, <laughs> that, <laughs> and prompting, prompting a probe, investigators reviewed her husband's medical records and discovered he hadn't received medical care for over four years, which they considered unusual for a man in his 70s. The complaint showed uh, the Las Vegas SSA office attempted to contact the man on the phone number listed on his records in July 2019, but received no response. They also attempted to contact Shetleski. Uh, Shetleski eventually called the Las Vegas SSA office and reported that she and her husband were living together in an apartment in the city. What did she give him the old weekend at Bernie's? <laughs> we can, when SSA agents interviewed her at the apartment in 2019, uh, December, she initially told them that her husband was doing a walkabout, traveling through the country, and that she hadn't seen him for about a couple months. Come on, he's 70 years old, and you're not with him? Like, later in the interview, Shaleski said that her husband had gone missing in August 2015. She then admitted that, she died, that he died that month in the basement of their family home in Pennsylvania. It wasn't uh, clear. It wasn't clear how he died. Yeah, her stories just didn't match up. Whoa. Yeah, her stories just didn't. Uh, yeah, she got caught. She got caught in her own. She had to tell the same story too many times. That's the uh, yeah. Ambushed, murdered eighteen year old with sword over romantic squabble. First off, this is love triangle shit. At eighteen years old. Uh, there should, there's nothing romantic. It's just weird puppy love and you'll get over it. Like, yeah, you get over it. Jesus Christ. At 18 years old, three teenagers allegedly ambushed and killed a young man over a romantic squabble, squabble in Miramore, Florida. Victim Dwight Grant, 18, had sex with the ex-girlfriend of Andre Clement, 17, who got so mad he recruited two girls. To help him commit murder. First off, if you, if that's your ex girlfriend, who cares? I mean, if somebody sleeps with your ex girlfriend, you know what you do? You get yourself checked. <laughs> At 17 years old, you get yourself checked and you go on about your business. And uh, and if you get so mad, if you're able to recruit two other girls to help him commit murder, then that means you have the power to move on anyway. Because one of those girls you can date again, at least, maybe. Now, I mean, like, you still have people in your circle. It's not like this was the last girl on the island or whatever. Jesus Christ. Uh, may, may are, if you, yeah, if you can't just take you, why would you even consider it an L? That's not even an L at this point. That's just you being young enough to find out that somebody's not for you and being young enough to move on with the rest of your life. Uh, it's horrifying, and he was such a good child. Uh, neighbor told the outlet his mother loved him. I can't even think something could happen like that. That's a sword. First off, where the hell do you get a sword from? Shit, I would think a new girlfriend would be easier to find than a sword, <laughs> let alone two accomplices to help you use said sword. <laughs> a friend of Grant's family said much of the same about the young man. Never had a problem with whether he stayed in the house. Uh, stayed out of trouble, he said. Trouble sought Grant. Murder will definitely happen soon. Clements, Clements allegedly texted co-defendant Christine Farsian. How are you so mad over, like, it's kids? 
teenagers. That's what they do. They don't know if they're going to be. They, they're going to mingle with each other. Going by the alleged text, she appeared gung-ho about helping. I would help you, but you becoming a murderer right now isn't what is needed. They act like this is some mob. Like, yeah, like, like what did he really do? Now, <laughs> was it that much of a disrespect? It's happening by homecoming. Wow. Oh, see, I can help with uh, Parson allegedly answered the, this Sunday or next. Clements allegedly wrote, you choose what? What? This is supposed to be like a like a like a gift to a friend. This is supposed to be like a friendly outing or something. Parson allegedly uh, said she had to go to her aunt's birthday party the, the following Sunday, but she could give her mother an excuse if Clements wasn't patient. What? <laughs> like yo, well, I gotta go to my. This is this is how you know these are kids. Now, nah, <laughs> they allegedly recruited Jaslyn Smith, sixteen, to help in the October seventeenth attack. Parsian allegedly called Grant and lured him to a stairwell at her apartment complex. Thirty-one minutes. Parisian acted as a lookout while Grant pleaded for his life. Authorities said, "You know, I have to kill you now." Clements allegedly said, grabbing a sword. And stabbing Grant in the neck, Grant told him to end it. Police said, wow, Clements allegedly stabbed him in the chest with the sword. The three teenagers carried his body and dumped it over a railing 30 feet, 30 feet from his apartment. This is crazy. One of, this is all, all of this over like a, a, a puppy love over a teenage crush? Like over a teenage, uh, yeah, one of the co-defendants was Clements' current girlfriend. Yep, according to the affidavits as reported. Uh, by NBC Miami. Under Florida law, authorities are allowed to release certain juvenile records, including a defendant's name and photograph. If the crime the juvenile is suspected of committing would be a felony if it is uh, if it was alleged to have been committed uh, by an adult. Damn. Wow. The state, I'm sure, is doing more investigation and they're going to have to make a very serious decision as to whether or not 17-year-olds are going to be charged as adults. This is this is open and close, uh, shut premeditated murder? Yeah, this is definitely premeditated murder. So, I yeah, it's sad that this happened, but yeah, I think they're gonna be charged as adults. Um, fun show, fun show, fun show. Uh, don't forget to turn on your post notifications so you can catch this ride with me next time. Uh, that being said, I'm going to wrap this up. I'll talk to you guys very, very soon. Adios.